Hello, everyone, everywhere. This is Pastor Robert Thibodeau. Welcome to your Freedom Through Faith video minute for today, which is April 28th. Amen. Just, just that a little bit. Today, I want to read to you from Mark chapter 8, verse 27, and down through verse 30. But before I do, let me give you the setting. Jesus had just completed a huge, huge, or back of a letter word, letter word, I'll say revival. Um, it was a, a meeting where miracles were performed, blind eyes were open, many healings took place. And on top of all that, he fed over 5,000 people with just a two piece fish dinner. Amen. And the disciples were part of every one of those miracles. They had seen it. They were there. They witnessed it. And in the feeding of the 5,000, they participated in it. Amen. People were coming up. The ones who got Jesus' attention were those who recognized him as being the Messiah. And you read this throughout the scriptures where people were calling out to him. Uh, take the lepers, take the uh, blind man, blind Bartimaeus, call it, you, son of David, have mercy on me. That term, son of David, to the Jewish ears, is the phrase that we call Messiah. They were calling out, you, Jesus, Messiah, the Jewish Savior, have mercy on me. You, Messiah, the one who's inheriting the throne of David, have mercy on me. Those are the ones where Jesus would just stop in his tracks, and he would turn and say, bring him to me. And they said, do you really believe I can do this? They said, oh, Lord, have mercy. Yes, Lord. And they would receive their miracle. Be according to your faith, be it unto you. All these things had taken place, these on educated people who had heard about Jesus, possibly heard him preach, seen the miracles that was being done, they recognized him as the Messiah. As he went into the Jerusalem, they're praising him, son of David, you know, all that. They're recognizing him as Messiah. And here in these scriptures, in Mark 8, 27 to 30, listen to what Jesus is saying. Jesus went out and his disciples into the towns of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, saying unto them, Who do men say that I am? Jesus doesn't answer a question unless he knows the answer already. Amen. <laughs> he's the Son of God. But he's leading his disciples into this thought process. They just finished these major miracles, they heard people say, son of David. He, he knows his disciples heard them say that. He knows his disciples understand these people have identified him as the Messiah. Now listen to the answers. Whom do men say that I am? Well, some say John the Baptist. Some say Elisha or Elijah. Others say you're just one of the prophets. Then he said to them, who do you say I am? Now stop and think about that. Why would he ask his disciples that question? One, he has had a personal relationship with each one of them. He individually called each one of them into his inner circle. Others who are following them is because they've seen the miracles, they've heard reports about him, but he individually called each one of his disciples into this relationship they have with him. Hold on to that thought because I'm coming back to it. Who do you say I am? Peter answering said unto him, you are the Messiah.
I'm just going to use this as an example. I'm not claiming any special privileges or anything like that. Okay, so don't write me dirty letters. What if I was doing all these miracles Jesus was doing? And it is possible to do that because Jesus himself said the same works I do, you will do also, and even greater works than these shall you do because I'm going to my Father. And I have been a part of several, several miracles, almost instantaneous miracles. I mean, in just the process of just two or three days, I have seen uh, just untold miracles. But I'm not going to get into that right now because this is not about me. I'm using me as an example. If you had seen those miracles work, which my family has, Would you call me the Messiah? Well, of course not, Brother Bob. I mean, Jesus is the one who got, but they didn't understand that. They didn't understand Jesus was born of a virgin. They, they don't have, we have the 10,000 foot view of what's taking place. Think about that. Think about the most decrepit inner city ghetto you can think of. And somebody living in that area is suddenly declaring, God loves you. God loves each and every one of you. And then he starts healing people and making provision for feeding the homeless and all of that. Would you call him the Messiah? He grew up in that neighborhood. Would you call him the Messiah? Now, that's what the disciples, and I hear your answers. No, you would not. But that's what the disciples are pondering and the struggle in their hearts. They were probably raised with Jesus as young children in that area. They see him as a man. I mean, he uses the bathroom just like they do. He has to eat just like they do. He has to sleep just like they do. Sometimes he gets angry. You know, he said, you can have righteous anger. Just don't let the sun go down on your breath. Just like they do, they get angry. He has compassion for some people just like they do. He sits around the campfire laughing and, and sometimes telling jokes just like they do. Everything he does it's just like they do, except when he goes to pray with his father. And he has such a sense of who he is. He does not sin, unlike what they do. It's one thing that sets him apart. The miracles and all that, they're still wondering in their heart. I mean, think about when he calms the wind and the waves. Who does these things? Even the wind and the waves obey him. Who does these things? See, the, the questions that they have in their heart, it's the same questions today. But with the disciples, listen to this now. Who do you say I am? They just got done hearing people who are not part of their group, people who are not even disciples, just people who have heard about him and come to witness what's going on or calling out to him as he walks by, calling him the Messiah, son of David. That's the reference of the Messiah. And they see it stop Jesus in his tracks, and he turns, and he does whatever they need. He says, who do you say I am? This is such turmoil in the, the disciples' heart because they're pondering all this. They're not sure. They're not positive. They're struggling. That He's just a man. He looks just like us. There's nothing special about him. He, he does all the same things. He gets tired. He gets hungry. He has to go to the bathroom. He, all these things. Who do you say Jesus is? With head knowledge of what we know in the Bible, it is so easy to say, I know Jesus is the Messiah. Do you really know that? Or is it just an answer you're giving in your head? You see, until you can come to the saving 
knowledge, and, and that's the, the Christian term for it, but it means a, a deep, complete understanding of who Jesus really is, not because the Bible says so, not because the ancient documents say so, not because of all the prophecies. This Bible was written so that you could understand he fulfilled all of these prophecies in a short span of time and is given as evidence to us. But who do you say Jesus is? In today's culture, some people just say, oh, he was just a man. He was a good man. He was just a man, just a prophet. See, they have not come to understand him as the Messiah. Who do you say Jesus is? Jesus said, don't tell any man that you know this about me. And then he began to teach them that the Son of Man, the one who would inherit everything created by God, given to Adam, lost by Adam, this man, the Son of Man, the second Adam, is going to take it all back. He's the only one legally authorized to do so. The Son of Man must suffer many things, be rejected to the elders and the chief priests and scribes, and be killed, but after three days, rise again. And he spoke that saying openly among them, right? And then Peter took him and tried to rebuke him, and Jesus rebuked him. Who do you say Jesus is? I, I, and today, the purpose of today's video is who do you say Jesus is? And I want you to understand that from the disciples' viewpoint, Jesus is just another man. Just another, they know his, you know, the crowd say, we know his family. We know his wife. His father died. We, we see his sisters and his brothers. He's here. How can he be the Messiah? You understand the turmoil that's going on? That's why I want you to understand today that to be a true, saved, born again Christian, you, you, must come to the complete understanding who Jesus really is. Only when you understand and recognize him as the Messiah can you be saved. Jesus spending time, close personal time with each one of those 12, involving them in all of the miracle healings taking place, involving all of everything they've seen. He did it to demonstrate to the people, but mainly to them, who he really is. And then he comes right out and says, who do people say I am? And some said, uh, you're you know, John the Baptist raised from the dead. Some say you're the prophet Elijah or Elijah. Some say you're just a prophet. They said, who do you say I am? That's the personal question Jesus is asking you today. And only until you can absolutely, unequivocally answer that he is the, the Savior of the world, he is the Messiah, when you can understand that, not just with head knowledge but with heart knowledge, that's when you can be blessed in all that you do.